So welcome to module 4.4 and in this module we will basically explain the hack CPU and uh, the explanation will be through executing a program. So let us see a very simple program which actually finds the maximum of A and B. The way it finds it out is that it subtracts B, uh, A from B and if the result is less than 0 then the maximum is A else the maximum is B as you see in this program. Now the corresponding uh, code for this hack code is this and the way this gets basically there are 24 instructions and the way this gets uh, uh, stored in the memory. So the memory is 16 bits, so these are 16 bit instructions. So from 0 to 24, 0 to 23 the 24 instructions get stored. And let us also assume that A, B and max are uh, stored in the data memory at 16, 17 and 18 locations and in the instruction memory the instructions are stored from 0 to 23. Now this is the setup. <coughs> Now this is the architecture that we have explained in the previous module. Now this architecture basically has a D register, A register, PC and memory. So the context of uh, architecture are the storage elements, the state of an architecture is are the storage elements. We have seen this in the earlier class, we have explained this in the earlier class. Now what is it that we are storing between instructions? We are storing the A, A register, the D register the program counter and whatever is there in the memory. The memory is basically uh, given by this out m the con uh, and uh, controlled by this right m and out m. So if the right m is 1 then whatever goes on the uh, out uh, uh, will be that data will be stored in the address given by address n. Always the address to the memory will be stored in the A register. So these are the things that we have seen. So the context of the process or the state of the uh, ar microarchitecture is defined by this D, A, P, C and the memory. So first when a reset comes, D will become 0, A will become 0, P, C will become 0. So this is the state of the architecture before we uh, send a reset. Now when a reset comes, please note that uh, uh, the, the, this became 0. Um, um, the D, D register also became 0, the PC is also reset to 0. The moment you re remove reset, what will happen? So since the PC is pointing to 0, the instruction in the 0th address in the instruction memory will be fetched. So on a tick of the clock, the instruction will be fetched. So these, this is, these are the instructions, 16 bits of the instruction and then that instruction will be processed and in the talk of the clock, the clock goes tick tock, right? So the tick, the instruction will be fetched from the memory, and in the talk of the clock, T O C K, the results will be stored in the destination. So this is how the whole thing works. Now initially, this is system reset, so we give a reset pulse, and everything becomes zero. Now let us see what the first instruction is. Since the PC was zero in the tick of the clock, the first instruction is forced and what is the first instruction? We go here and see the first instruction is at 11 that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now what is this instruction supposed to do? It is to load the A register with 11 and it should not do anything with anything else. So what are the other things? It should load the A register with 11, the D register should be untouched, memory should not be written and at the end of the instruction that is on the talk, your PC should be incremented to 1. So two of the storage elements in this context will change, Con one is the A register which will now get upgraded to 11 and then the PC which needs to get incremented to 1. The D register will be unchanged and the memory also will be unchanged. Now that we can see, now what will happen? Now what is the, uh, so when the A register has to change on the talk of the clock, TOCK of the clock, the load for the A register should be 1 and that 
essentially happens here. So, so this is the this is the type bit. As you remember, this is the type bit which distinguishes between an A instruction and a C instruction. This is an A instruction, and now that this is one because this is the T bit, the type bit, and tilde T is one. So A load is one, while D load is zero. So nothing will happen to D, and the increment load is 0 for the PC, so the increment is 1 for the PC and write m is 0 to the memory, so nothing will get written into the memory, right. Write m is 0 for the memory, so nothing gets written into the memory, right. So, so this 1 will arrive here and also note that this mul particular multiplexer, it is this is to decide between the output of the ALU and the 15 bits that are coming from the instruction. So, that will now decide since this is 0, this will decide that whatever is coming in the instruction has to go and wait at the input of the A register. So, the moment the talk comes, uh, the tick comes, the A register's load has become 1, the value 11 is now available at the just the edge of the A register, D register is untouched, write m is 0, T is 0, so this is 0, nothing will write into the memory, increment is 1 for the PC and so in the talk what will happen, since A register's load is 1, 11 will get into the A register and since increment to the PC is 1, PC will get incremented to 1. Since the load for the D register is 0, nothing will happen to 0, nothing will happen to the D register and since write term is 0, nothing will happen to the memory. So, at the end of this A register will, will get 11 and your PC will now become 1. Now, this PC is now again fed back into your memory. So, now in the next tick what will happen? the next instruction will be fetched from the mem memory and what is that next instruction D equal to A. So, whatever is there on the A register should essentially move to the T register that is what that needs to be that, that needs to be done here and this is a C type instruction ok. Now, <coughs> that means now note that um, let us go. So, so since D equal D needs to be updated in the next talk tick this instruction has come in the talk what should happen your D should get 11 and your PC so should now increment to 2 nothing should happen to memory and nothing should happen to the A register. So, the D register and the PC alone has to change here. Now, you see that D the, the bit here is 1 the load to the D register is 1. So, the moment I get this instruction immediately you see that the load to this instruction is 1 and then um, the, the input to the ALU is 110000 and the A bit is also 0. Since the A bit is 0 then whatever is there in the capital A register will go into the ALU if the A bit as you see here is if the A bit is 1 then whatever is there on the memory should go. So, the small A bit decides which is the operand to the ALU this we have explained. So, now to the ALU 11 has come in and uh, the A bit is 0 and then uh, here D bit is 0. Anyway, when we give 110000 with A bit is 0 the ALU will just transfer this A to the output. So, 11 has come out of this and then it is fed back and it is available in the edge of the D register, it has not entered the D register. So, what has happened? The moment that the instruction entered this point, please note that the value in this A register has gone through these MUX and come out through the ALU and then it is now fed back and it is available in the mouth of the D register and the D register's load is 1 because the destination bits 
d1, d2, d3, right? The destination bit has set to 1 and PC's increment is also 1, load is 0. Now, and importantly also note that the A, A register's load is 0. So, nothing will happen to A register. The write -um bit is also 0 because T is uh, 1, D3 is 0 as you see here, D1, D2, D3, <coughs> right? The D3 is 0 here. So, since the D3 is 0, uh, write -um is 0. So, nothing will happen to the memory. So, when the talk of the clock comes, the D register will now get updated by 11 and your PC now will increment to 2, okay, right. So, that is what needs to happen. Nothing will happen to the memory, nothing will happen to the A register, that context will happen. So, this is a status. Now, D register has become 11, A register is 11 already, PC is now 2. When Now, this PC is fed back into the ROM and now what we are going to get is, uh, the second instruction, the, the third instruction which is PC equal to 2, 0, 1, 2, the third instruction from the ROM. And what is it? It is again an at A. Now, what is A? Uh, the assembler has said that A is uh, 16, 1, 0, 0, 0. So, since it is an A type instruction, this MUX will take it directly from the instruction. So, 16 will be available in the mouth of the A register. And what is this instruction supposed to do? It has to now update the A register by 16, it should not touch the D register, it should not touch the memory and it should increment the PC. Already increment to the PC is 1 because load is 0, so increment to the PC is 1 and the 16 is available uh, here and uh, to as the, at the input of the A register and there is going to be. Uh, and also note that the load bit to the A register is also 1, right. So, load load bit to the 1 and the D register's load is 0, right. So, and uh, since uh, write -um bit is also 0, so nothing will happen to the memory. So, when the talk of the clock comes, uh, this 16 basically gets loaded into the A register, nothing happens to the D register, this PC gets incremented to 3 and nothing gets done into the memory. So, now we have 11, 16 and 3. Now, this 3 goes in. What is this 3? The, what is there in the third location in the ROM? m equal to d. What should m do? M e, what, what should this m equal to d do? What is m? So, in the, in the address given in the A register, go and write the content of D, that is what this means. In the address given in the A register, that is what we specify by M, go and write the content of D. So, what is there in the A register before this instruction? 16 was there. This 16, uh, 16 so into the memory address 16, the content of D, what is it? 11. So, in the, in the memory, uh, in the data memory where 16 currently 0 is there, it should now be 11. So, at the end of this instruction, the data memory location 16 should get the value 11 <coughs> and, and nothing else should change. Your A register should not change, your D register should not change, your memory 16th location in the memory should get 11 and your uh, PC should increment to 4. Now, note that when given this instruction, you can see that your load of the A is 0, load of the D is 0 and, uh, but write M to the memory is 1 because your T bit is 1 and your destination 3 is 1. So, T and D 3 is 1, right and your uh, address M is basically taken from the register that is 16. Right, and what will the ALU do? 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. This basically transfers the value D. The A bit is 0, uh, the, uh, the, so the value will be, uh, the output will be D. So, this you can see from this table. So, I just want you to go back to this table and see the output will be D. Right? 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 with the A, small a bit 0, the output will be D. So, the output is D. 
So, 11 will be available here. Now, when the talk of the clock comes, your PC gets uh, uh, So, your, uh, when the talk of the clock comes, your PC gets incremented to 4 and uh, your 16th location given by address m gets the value 11 because your write m is 1. And since the load bit for uh, load for D register and A register are 0, they remain unchanged, right. So, this is what happens here. So, at the end of this story, Please note that the 16th location in the memory got 11 uh, and your PC got incremented to 4 while your A register and D register remain same. Now, this 4 goes again the tick of the clock comes. So, the instruction in the fourth location in the instruction memory is fetched which is nothing but at 20. <coughs> so, this is an A instruction. Now, note that the D registers is 0, load, load for the D register is 0 write m is 0. So, nothing will happen to memory, nothing will happen to D register. What should happen? The A register should get the value 20 and uh, note that increment uh, to the PC is 1. So, at the talk of the clock what will happen? A register will get 20 while uh, PC will get incremented to 5. Nothing will happen to memory, nothing will happen to the D register and that is what you see here. And again this mux, please note that because this is uh, A type instruction, you get the 0 here. This mux will push in whatever is there in the instruction to the uh, A register. So, that will push in this 20 here, right. So, A register gets 20. So, A register got 20, this got 11 and then this is 5. So, the fifth instruction is now uh, being fetched on the tick of the clock again, you get the fifth instruction which is nothing but d equal to a. So, this 11 now be needs to become 20. Now, how does it happen? Again a register, the input to the a register, the load is 0 here, while please note that the load here which is t and d 2, this is 1, right. This is 1 for the uh, d register because d has to get updated. So, D has to now become 20. So, the load for the D register is 1 here. PC is just incrementing. This is 0. The write m to the memory is 0. So, nothing will happen to the memory. PC will get incremented. But what has happened here? This a, the small a bit what you see here is 0 uh, uh, to this max. So, that means whatever is the content of a will be pushed into the ALU. So, this is 20 and then the, the type of computation is 110000 to the ALU and what it will do, it just uh, if you just see back the table, the output will be A that is 20 reaches here and this 20 is fed back. So, on the tick of the clock when this instruction comes, 20 is available in the mouth of the uh, D register and its load is 1, A register is 0 write to the memory is 0 and this uh, PC is in the increment mode. So, at the talk of the clock 20 will now move into uh, D register and this uh, PC will increment to 6 right and that is what is happening. <coughs> so, PC has incremented to 6. So, PC will now be fetched, uh, PC now will be fed back to the ROM in the tick of the clock again you get the next instruction which is at b, at b is 17. So, again this is an a type instruction. So, 17 comes, 17 from the instruction is routed by this mux and it is available in the mouth of the a register and the load to the a is 1, load to d is 0, write to the memory is 0, pc is in increment mode. So, in the talk of the clock 17 will be loaded into the a register and PC will be incremented to 7. Since D registers load is 0, write to the memory is 0, nothing will happen to the memory or the D register. <coughs> now, this 7 is fed back to the uh, room and the at the tick of the next clock you get m equal to D. What will m equal to D means? 
that in the location 17 that is given in the A register store the content of the D register that is 20. So, and in the data memory 17 the value 20 will get stored the value 20 needs to get stored in data location 17. So, that is what will happen as a part of this instruction. Now, again you see A registers load is 0, D registers load is 0, write M is 1, address bit is 17 and you have given 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 to the ALU and what will the A and the uh, A bit small A bit is 0. Now, if you see from the table the output will be D. So, 20 comes here. Now, this 20 now since the item is 1 in the talk of the clock the location 17 will be returned with the value 20 and the PC will get incremented to 8. <coughs> okay. And nothing will happen to the A register or the D register because the load bit for them is 0. <coughs> Now, the next thing now this 8 is being fed, fed, fed back into the room. Again, in the tick of the clock, you get PC, uh, you get this at A, at A is 16. <coughs> so, the small a is mapped down to 16. So, this is 16. Now, 16 should get what will this instruction do? Again, it will make the capital A register 16. So, this 17 should be now replaced by 16 at the end of this instruction. So, again you see that the uh, uh, load, load bit for the A register is 1, load bit for the D register is 0, write M to the memory is 0 um, and uh, PC is in increment mode. At the talk of the clock your A register basically gets 16 and your PC will be incremented to 9. Right. Now, PC got incremented to 9 and your A register did get updated to 16. Now, this PC is again fed again and uh, the ninth instruction is fetched. Now, this is a nice instruction D equal to D minus M. So, what you should do your 20 is equal to uh, so sorry your D register should is, is equal to 20 minus whatever is there in the memory which memory whatever is given by the A register. So, the D register should get its content 20 subtracted by the content of the A register that is the 16th location, content of the 16th location, content of the 16th location is 11. So, 20 minus 11 should become 9. So, D should get the value 9 that is what should happen in this instruction and the PC should become uh, incremented to 10. So, two things should happen at the talk of this that is the end of this instruction, your D register should get 9 and your PC should become 10 increment. A register should not change, nothing in the memory should change. First note that write M is 0, but the address is 16. Since the address is 16, that will be fed to the data memory and in the 16th location what is there? 11 is there, that 11 will be available at in M as you see here. So, 11 is available here. Now, your A small A bit determines what goes to the y input of the ALU and since that is 1, so, so the, the memory in that 11 value goes to this ALU. Here 20 is always fed here and the next one is 0 1 0 0 1 1 and that is the compute. So, the answer you can go back to the table and you can find that D minus M is what it will compute. So, 20 minus 11 is computed, 9 is available here and it is fed back and it is available in the mouth of the T register. So, in the talk of the clock nothing will happen to memory because write M is 0, nothing will happen to the A register because its load is 0, but the D register since its load is 1 T and D 2 the T bit and the destination 2 bit that is also 1 uh, the end of that is 1. So, the value 9 will get uploaded into the D register and your PC will get incremented to 10. <coughs> again this is another A instruction at A max, A max is again 10010 0, 0, 1, 0, which is nothing but 16 plus 2 18, but this is in the instruction memory 
please do not confuse it with the data memory. So, at A max is 18. So, 18 should get loaded into the uh, A register. Again, now you note that at the end of this instruction, so at the tick when this instruction comes, 18, uh, this 0, this is a 0 bit. So, this particular MUX routes 18 to the mouth of the A register. Uh, write time is 0, so nothing happens to memory. The, the load bit for the D register is 0, so nothing happens to the D register and your PC is increment, uh, increment input of the PC is 1, so it should get incremented to 11. So, at the, at the talk of this clock, uh, again your uh, PC will, get, so your A register will get 18 and your uh, PC will become 11. That is what has happened, your A register has become 18 and your PC has become 11. Now, this PC is now fed back into this. Uh, uh, now, this is one instruction D colon JLT. If your D is less than 0, then jump, right. If your D is less than 0, then jump, right. Jump where? Jump to the location 18, right. If your D is less than 0, jump to the location 18, right. Otherwise, what do you do? If your D is not less than 0, so just, uh, just go to PC equal to 12. So, what happens here? So, let us see this. This is, uh, this is a new instruction because it is jump instruction. Now, your A, A load of A is 0, load of uh, D is 0, D register is 0 uh, and the uh, what 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 is the ALU supposed to compute? It is comp it is supposed to compute D, and for that what do you give zero zero one one zero zero that is fed here, right? And if you just give zero zero one one zero zero, this compute and the A bit is zero, then the output of uh, uh, the memory is D. That we see again. I just want you to uh, go back. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 and the small a bit is 0, please note that the output of the ALU is capital D, right. So, so since 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 is given to the ALU and uh, so the output of this is 9. Since it is 9, it is neither 0 and uh, it is also uh, 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 the output is uh, uh, so, ng is also 0, right. So, uh, so because the output is greater than 0, ng, ng says that ng becomes 1 if the output is not greater than 0. So, the so output is not 0 and it is also greater than 0. So, so the zr and the ng flags are 0, 0. Now, if you calculate the load since is though the t bit is 1, your zr and ng flag both are zeros, right, both are zeros and uh, this is a conditional jump that is j1 is uh, 0, j1 is 1, you will go see that the load is 0 because surely since the d output is greater than 0, uh, uh, so this jump will not happen, right. So, so, so your load is 0, so increment is 1. So, the increment is 1 and uh, so this will just do it will just increment the PC. Nothing will happen to memory, nothing will happen to the uh, uh, A register or D register, but what only the PC will get updated. So, in any jump instruction, the PC essentially has to get updated and the PC essentially gets updated here. Uh, if, if the jump is taken, then the PC should get the uh, new value. If the jump is not taken, then it just in gets incremented. In this case that this is a conditional jump, but the jump is not taken, so PC just gets incremented to 12. Now, the next instruction is again at B, so at B is uh, 17, so this is an A instruction, so this MUX basically routes 17 which is coming from the instruction to the mouth of the A register and the load to the A register is 1, load to the D register is 0, write time is 0 and PC is in increment mode. So, at the talk of the clock, 17 gets up loaded into this uh, A register and your PC gets incremented to 13. The memory and the D registers are untouched. 
Now, what is P c equal to 13? Now, D should become M. The 13th instruction when it comes as a tick, what it says D equal to M. So, what is M? M is what is there in the 17th location in your data memory. What is there in the 17th location in the data memory? 20 is there in the 17th location in the data memory and that should basically get updated into the A register. Okay, 70, 20 should get updated into the D register. So, what is there in the 17th location in the memory that, that is the A register content of the A register, 17th location in the memory should get updated uh, should get should be loaded into the D register. So, so, essentially at the end of this instruction the D register should get the value 20. So, that is what should happen. So, how does it happen? First note that uh, the uh, the <coughs> that the uh, that the write term is 0, so nothing happens to the memory. The address m is 17, which comes from the A register. Uh, your uh, address m is 17. So, the 0 and 17 fed, fed to the data memory essentially will read the content of this uh, 17th location. So, 20 comes in and your a bit is 1, small a bit is 1. So, this mux distinguishes between uh, you know the routes between a and this m. So, this will route 20 here and you have given 110000. So, if you give 11000 whatever is there as this d and this m goes out. So, 20 will be available at the out m and that will be fed back. So, after the tick when the instruction comes the value 20 essentially comes to the mouth of the D register. A register is 0, the D registers load is 1. So, T is 1 and D 2 the destination 2 is also 1, T and D 2 is 1. So, at the talk of the clock your D register will get 20, A register will be untouched because it is 0, its load is 0, your memory will be untouched because write m is 0 you have read from the memory, you, have, you are not writing into the memory and your uh, PC essentially will get incremented to 14. So, that is what is going to happen, yes the PC has incremented to 14, your D register did get 20. Now, again at max and we assume that the max is in uh, 18th location. So, again this is an A, in, A type instruction, so this MUX will root 18 which is coming in the instruction itself as you see here this instruction itself into the mouth of uh, the A register and the load for the A register is 1, load for the D register is 0, load to the memory is 0 and increment uh, for the PC is in the increment mode. So, at the talk of the clock 18 gets loaded into the uh, A register while the PC gets incremented to 15. Now, M equal to D. So, the 15th instruction is m equal to d. So, what m equal to d means the, the content of the d register namely 20 needs to be written into the address 18. m means memory, which address in the memory whatever is there in the capital A register 18. So, now you see, uh, so this essentially happens here. So, your uh, the A registers load is 0 your D registers load is 0, so nothing happens to your A or D register, your write M is 1, so something happens, something is written into the memory, what is written into the memory, to which address it is written into the memory, the, uh, the 18th address, it is written into the address 18 and what is written, the output of the ALU is written okay? and the PC will get incremented to 16, so that is what needs to be happening. And now, this is 0, so the so so and we have given 0 0 1 1 0 0. If I give 0 0 1 1 0 0 to the ALU and the A bit is also 0, the output will be D. So, 20 now goes to out M. So, at the talk of the clock, nothing happens to the A register or the D register, but the memory since write M is 1, the 18th location of the memory gets written with the value 20 and your PC gets incremented to 16. So, your 18th location got 20 and your PC did get incremented to 16. 
So, what is there in 16? Again, it is an at instruction uh, which is 10110. So, 10110 is uh, uh, 22. Okay. So, since it is again an A instruction, this Maxwell root the 22 that is coming as a part of the instruction to the mouth of the A register, the A register's load is 1, uh, your D register's uh, load is 0, memory is 0, and the PC is in increment mode. So, nothing happens to the memory or the D register, your A gets updated to 22 while your PC gets uh, uh, incremented to 17. Now, in the tick of the next clock, the, the instruction at 17 is brought here and please note that this is going to be an unconditional jump, 0 colon jump. Right? <coughs> so, what will happen that in this case your A address, A register or the D register will not be touched, your memory also will not be touched, but your PC instead of incrementing from uh, 17 to 18 should now get updated with 22. PC is currently in 17, now it should get updated by 22, that is whatever is there in the A register. So, now you note that load is 1, when the load is 1, what will happen? The A register's content will get uploaded here. So, the PC now will become 22, while the uh, nothing will happen to the A register or the D register or, or the memory. The PC alone instead of becoming 18, will now become 22. Please note that for the unconditional sum, your J1, J2, J3 are 1. So, in this uh, context, your uh, J1 and J2 and J3 are 1 and the T bit is also 1. So, your load actually becomes 1 and so in the next you get 22. So, again you fetch the instruction 22, instruction in the memory 22, uh, uh, in the instruction memory 22, which is again an at instruction which loads 22 back into the A register, right. So, again this is an A, so this mux will route the 22 that is coming as a part of the instruction here and the, again the A bit uh, is 1, load for the A bit is 1, load for this D register is 0, the load for memory is 0 and this is incremental. So, what will happen? So, this uh, uh, P, A register will become 22 and the PC will get incremented to 23. PC got incremented to 23. And again in 23, it is again 0 colon jump. 0 colon jump means is again unconditional jump. So, again the PC should instead of becoming 24, it should now become 22. And that happens. Note that the A registers load is 0, D registers load is 0, write to memory is 0, but the load to the PC is 1 because your J1, J2, J3 are 1 and your T instruction is 1. So, your uh, uh, your PC now gets instead of getting incremented to 20, uh, 24, it again gets back 22 that is A. So, again PC becomes 22, it is again the same at end instruction. So, this is an infinite loop that we had created at the end of this as you uh, see here, right. So, again PC equal to 23, PC equal to 22. So, this repeats. So, this is an infinite loop that we had uh, just done as a part of this program, right. So, we have done this at 10 0 colon jump, this is between 22 and 23. So, what we have done in this particular module so far is that we have explained the architecture by making one complete simulation of a, uh, the, a simple program. So, this will give you more clarity of the how the architecture needs to be built. Now, <coughs> What we will do is that uh, we basically uh, mm, look at this architecture. Now, we will just see what the, how the program is written. So, go to the project, go to 0 05, let us see the CPU. <coughs> and let us have this side by side. Now, you see that 
as you see here. Um, so, the CPU basically has uh, a 16 bit instruction that is given here as you as we are seeing and then uh, uh, a 16 bit memory this is coming from the memory in M and a reset, reset comes from outside as you see here and then what goes out of the CPU is uh, something uh, there is an out M that goes which is 16 bit there is a write m which goes to the memory, the data memory whether it should be written or not, there is an address m to the data memory and the PC that is going back to the ROM. So, these are all the outputs. So, this is how we have created this and uh, please note that uh, mm, now this, this, this is the, this MUX 16 that we are seeing here of course, uh, corresponds to this MUX as you see here. And this A register can be, uh, you can use the register that you have done uh, uh, as a part of your previous assignment project, but you can also use this A register which is a built in chip because then you get that uh, A register in the simulation. So, you get a figure of the A register, so you can actually monitor what is happening inside A register separately. You can just use register or you can use A register, both will work, but if you put this A register on the screen, you will see a separate uh, block for A you can keep monitoring it. So, this is uh, this. and similarly the D register here and uh, so this, this AND gate is basically for uh, this uh, the load for the D register and this R and not as for the load for this MUX, uh, this A register uh, whatever you see here and this MUX 16 that you see is uh, this MUX 16 which is feeding to the ALU, then you instantiate the ALU which you have done uh, earlier and all these uh, uh, 7 or things that you see here, this these instructions are to uh, for this load and increment logic that is for the PC, right. And you also instantiate this whole thing 7 or 8 this thing and then you also instantiate this PC here, this is for the PC. So, this is how you create the and this is all that you need to do to basically uh, generate this CPU. Now, very quickly we will, uh, we will go and uh, mm, uh, execute this CPU. So, let us go and take the hardware simulator. So, I can basically take this uh, CPU now, I am loading the CPU. I am loading the script. So, there is a CPU here, there are two scripts CPU and CPU external. So, you can you need to load both the scripts and see how it is working. So, since I use that capital A register and the capital D register, if you see the screen here, you will see one separate entry, entry for the A register and the separate entry for the D register. Of course, PC is there and this ALU of course, uh, is also here, okay. So, we can use this, right. So, so we will just see the script here. So, we will just run the script. We need to run the script by now, you know. So, all the instructions are tested in the script and then you see that it has compared successfully. Similarly, you load the next script which is uh, CPU external, load the script and again you run the script, this script also and you see all these uh, jumps are being tested one after another and this also ended successfully, right. So, at the end of this you have done the hack CPU correctly. Now, we will go to the next module where we will be talking about the data memory.